So there's a couple more things I needed to add here. I know I'm going to need some parameters, so I went ahead and built those out. And these are just spin boxes, which you can get to down here in input and then edit utility spin box. Talked about this earlier, but uh, just a quick review. So I'm setting a min value and a max value and then a min slider value and a max value, which matches that and then a, a default value to begin. And everything else is going to be pretty much, pretty much the same there. And this is just a, a piece of text, this guy right there. Okay, so I've got UV bounds, voxel grid size, and reduction percentage. So and I may add more as I go. These are just the ones I can think of off the top of my head. Okay. So what we're going to do is we are first going to voxelize this geometry. And uh, we could do a remesh, but the benefit of a voxelization operation is if there are any internal faces, those will be removed. So we're going to head over to our process mesh function, pull off from the dynamic mesh output there. And just type in voxel, you'll get the apply mesh solidify option. We will pipe that in like so. Pull off from the options tab there, type in options. So for now, we're going to just grab a grid parameter just to see what it's got. Can it compile and save? So by default, it's going to be using grid resolution. If I mouse over grid resolution, what we can see here is it's going to be using a grid cell size derived from the target object bounds. So what that means is the bounding box of each object here is going to directly influence the distribution of its up res, right? So what I'm going to do is with the default there, I'm going to go ahead and just hit process fracture. Right now, none of this is being used. Okay, so and again, just for clarity's sake, this is generating this, and this actor here is an instance of this static mesh. So you can see it, it looks a little sharper over here than, than it does over here. So if we turn on our mesh edges, what we'll see is it's super dense over here, and it's not that dense over here. And the reason is this piece is bigger than these other pieces, so it got less. That's not what we want. We want something that's consistent. So rather than using grid resolution, I'm going to use grid cell size. We'll hit compile and save. Run it again. Okay, so now we have a consistently dense mesh, but it is very dense. So let's throw a, a little bit of a, a higher value here in our grid cell size. And in, in this case, we could pipe something in or we can come over and grab this value, our voxel grid size spin box, right there. So we can find it right up here. Might be a little easier if I give myself some space. Okay, so there's the voxel grid cell size. And if you just type in get value, we can pipe that directly in. And just to confirm that it's working, We'll set it to something like five. Okay, fantastic. So five is gonna be way too low, but something like one, which is the default here, is probably gonna work a lot better. Okay, great. So let me go and we'll turn off the wireframe just a moment. You can see it's got this stair stepping thing on here, and that has to do with the resolution of our voxel grid. So we're going to probably want to do a smooth operation. But before we do the smooth, we have a lot of extra polygons here we don't need for these flat surfaces here that can be reduced significantly. So let's make a little bit of space, pull off, and type in simplify. And we're going to do a simplify to triangle count. And if you are ever forgetful about it, uh, specifically what a node might be called and you think it might be something else, like for instance, reduce might be a valid guess. You can always just come over to the modeling menu. See which one is it? Simplify, right here in mesh. So they call it simplify. And that makes it pretty easy. All right. So what we're going to do here is we need to tell it what is our final triangle count going to be? Well, it'll be helpful to know how many we're starting with. So we can pull off here and type in get num triangles. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use our reduction percentage value to bring that number down. A 
once again. Type in get value. And then we're going to do a multiplication. Just do multiply. And then we can pipe that in to there. And it's going to go ahead and truncate. It's just going to pop the uh, decimal point off of that. Because obviously the triangle count is going to be an integer. We'll hit compile and save. Run it again. So it doesn't look any different, which is a good sign. But you can see now it's significantly reduced. So that might be too much. 0.1 is, is a pretty aggressive reduction, but anyway, you get the idea. The next thing we want to do here is a UV bake. And we're going to do this using projection. So we're going to do a set mesh UVs from box projection. And we're going to get this box transform, which we can pull off. Actually, we'll just go ahead and right click and make a transform. Pipe that in. And then in our, our input values here, we have a UV bounds. And the way that I make this look like an int is I, I just chopped off the, uh, let's see if I select it, the min and max fractional digits fit that to zero. It's going to, it's just going to behave like an integer. So we'll go ahead and grab our UV bounds. You can see it highlights it there. If you've got it selected in the designer, which is pretty convenient. And we're going to pipe that into scale here. So I'm actually going to split this. We'll do a get value. And we'll keep this consistent across X, Y, Z. We'll run it again. So now we have some UVs. We can see what this will look like. If we go ahead, I'm going to turn the wireframe off and apply our uh, material to it. So it's looking a little bit low res. I'm going to increase this to 2000. Larger numbers here will be effectively zooming out. In fact, we can take a look at the UVs. Maybe I'll do that using the UV tool here. Go to the UV editor. So this is our zero to one, and this is what all this geometry looks like at a thousand. So if I set this to, sorry, I guess a lower value is what I want. So that'll be effectively zooming in. So we'll set this to 500. Process this one more time. Make sure I've got the right thing selected. So you can see it's looking a little bit better. So we were here. Let's go ahead and take a look at that again. And you can see the UV shells have gotten bigger. So that is going to be the effect of changing this value. The lower the value, the higher the resolution is here. And the higher the value, the lower resolution is. So, so long as it's consistent, you can dial that into taste. And typically what I do with this kind of thing is I will figure out what makes the most sense and then create a preset. And we'll be talking about presets here fairly soon. It's not that difficult and it is incredibly useful. So this is probably good enough for this video, but I will be talking about if maybe adding a few more features here for making this look even better. And then we'll talk about the preset functionality.